Hey what up boys, today we've got another delicious episode of Cock, so sit back, relax and <coughs> grab yourself a Coca Cola because our topics consist of the everyday gameplay loop, archetype utilities, but also quite a controversial topic as we're going to touch on Final Fantasy XIV because you all know how much I love anime right? If you have an interesting anecdote that you want to discuss, go ahead and let us know in the comments below and it's highly likely to be featured in a future episode of Cock, uh, you know, provided it's not brain dead. Now with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin shall we? First off, I want to grab an interesting discussion we've had recently in the Discord, which you're welcome to join by the way, as we're very close to reaching the goals required for partnership. So that's kind of pog. Anyway, Penumbra is our MVP today, and they said, so what would we call that I'm looking forward to in Ashes of Creation are the secret areas of dungeons that unlock, hopefully randomly, at certain times of the day slash week as the parent nodes level, giving rogues more of a useful and contributing role in a party of dungeon crawlers. And the reason this particular conversation was so interesting to me was not only because I've recently done a video talking about this very subject, it's also because if too many archetypes have the ability to reveal special routes inside these dungeons, then that particular skill doesn't really have much meaning. First of all, to keep this feature relevant and unforgotten across the world of Vera's multiple dungeons, these shortcuts need to exist in all of them, but they need to be tied to only a few classes. So far we've heard of Perception, which was on a tank in a very early build that I'm showing you in the background. The Rogue has utility to sense traps and hidden doors. We've got Track for the Ranger, and finally Detect Magic for the Mage. All four of these are different variations of the same thing basically, and can all be used to unlock different paths through dungeons. I don't think the tank will end up having Perception in the end though, as it kinda makes the whole system pointless when a class you're going to want to bring to every dungeon has the ability to see these secret doors etc. So I wouldn't be surprised if Perception ended up being the name of the Rogue's utility ability instead. So that gives 3 out of the 8 classes the ability to unlock additional routes through a dungeon, Mage, Rogue and Ranger. This has to be by design, because in my opinion this is the perfect number and unique class spread to have these abilities. We've got one magical ranged DPS, one physical ranged DPS, and one physical melee DPS, giving these DPS classes more of a role than simply dealing damage. Your group may want a ranger specifically for tracking a unique path down a dungeon you're about to delve. Hell, if groups were really into exploration, the group could consist of one tank, one cleric, one mage, ranger, and one rogue for maximum coverage across a group's dungeon run. But that then begs the question, what about the other classes? What incentive is there to bring them if they have no utility to offer? Well we've speculated a lot on what the other classes utilities could be and I'm super interested to hear what you guys think the remaining three archetypes, summoner, fighter and bard, may have to help a group composition in some way. Summoners having the ability to detect players entering the dungeon for a PvP, fighters having the ability to weaken the armor of bosses, and bards having the ability to put certain threats to sleep, completely removing them as a mechanic, making the dungeon run as a whole a lot easier. I think these examples are good enough to get you guys rolling on some really good ideas in the comments. An important part of every MMO is the everyday gameplay loop that keeps us engaged, and Graypelt talks about this in relation to developed nodes. They said, I suppose what I would like in terms of this are Ashes of Creation's events always having a chance to come back around if X actions are repeated through node destructions or redevelopment, even if it causes some guarantee not to come back after 6 months. And we actually touched on this a lot in the previous episode of COC2 with the one time events, as a lot of the comments I got on that video were in relation to this exact thing. And to most of those comments, I gotta say, sieging a node is not a one time event. It's part of Ashes of Creation's everyday gameplay loop. 
if you miss a node siege, well, you don't miss out on anything. So it doesn't really fall in the same category as the usual one-time events that MMOs pull to increase engagement numbers, as there's no specific one-time rewards tied to sieges. So I hope that clears up any confusion you guys had on my last cog. But moving away from the node sieges for now, PvE is a huge part of an MMO, and Intrepid have really kept that side of the game hush-hush for now, as it's likely not even began being worked on. But I made a video back in the day about what I hoped we'd see from the PvE endgame in Ashes of Creation, and I want to go over that again now for you all, because I think it really plays into the way this world is going to work in terms of progression and teamwork. So, once a week, or every few days, once a server has reached a certain level of progression, having multiple metropolises, etc, a world event spawns with a similar timer to the sieges to let people get ready for it and prepare. When this event starts, Harbingers burst through the Veil of Essence from the Void, crashing around the outskirts of all the most developed nodes, and begin pouring in waves of lesser and greater ancients to attack the cities and villages. Players are then required to band together and defend their node, similar to a PvP one, but it's in a much more controlled and structured environment that allows players to really feel like they can participate in a siege-like event without being forced to engage in PvP if they really Really don't want to. Additionally, there can also be something similar but on the opposite spectrum, where instead of attacks coming to us, we go to it, allowing raids to incorporate some PvP into this dynamic using one of our main antagonists, Atrax the Half-Elf Lich. I explain who Atrax is in my lore series up here in the top corner if you want to go and catch yourself up on that, but the context of who he is isn't really important for this video. What matters is that he is an undead lich, meaning he will be around still when we come back to Vera after our exodus. So him having a stronghold for us to attack is a perfect way to give players a goal to work towards. This, of course, needs to also be set up at a specific time, otherwise we'll end up with a weird situation where players are just farming it the moment it spawns, and that's just garbage game design. As I said though, this particular PvE event is more like a PvX one, where raids can compete for the kill, rather than the more PvE-based defense ones that the Harbinger attacks. Remember guys, we're pushing for Intrepid to hire me as their lead content advisor so make sure you let Steven know that my ideas are the best things you've ever heard and I'm a genius who should be hired immediately. If you're in the Discord, you know my thoughts on Final Fantasy XIV, but I wanted to address it again as this comment from, uh, let's just go with Ben. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name, sorry mate. They said, Final Fantasy XIV is the anti-Ashes of Creation. I'm surprised you're willing to look into it. Very few players in that community care about Ashes of Creation and vice versa. Well, yeah, although that is true, the reason I was so interested in Final Fantasy XIV was because of how it clawed itself back from being the garbage that it was to now the most popular MMO currently until Ashes of Creation releases. And I tried Final Fantasy XIV, I really did. The game's just, it's not for me. I don't think you should need to spend a hundred hours in an MMO to get to the good content. That mentality is from 10 years ago when we didn't really have the choice of what MMO we played. It was either World of Warcraft or... <laughs> World of Warcraft. But there's always the hope that they may streamline the story in a realm reborn one day and I can give it another try. For now though, it's a hard pass from me. I even had a whole 16 minute video I made and I just scrapped it because I genuinely didn't enjoy the game. I don't play MMOs to engage in a story. There's plenty of single player games to scratch that itch for me. Hell, I can just go and play the actual Final Fantasy games. When I play an MMO, I enjoy the power growth, the progression, and creating interesting builds with team compositions for extremely difficult, small scale PvE dungeons, similar to like Mythic Plus. But most importantly, I enjoy PvP. Final Fantasy XIV offers neither of these to me. I truly did give the game a solid try, but after 50 hours or so, uh, I just couldn't take the booba anymore. What a joker. <laughs> 
feels like this game is designed for a more younger, casual audience who like taking their time enjoying what a game has to offer, and obviously the social interaction side of things, and that's great. That's exactly what MMOs are supposed to be, right? Final Fantasy XIV does great in this aspect, and that's probably why the community is so friendly and engaged with each other constantly. So yeah. That's pretty much my thoughts on Final Fantasy XIV. I wanted to get it off my chest because I did tease a video about it a while ago on the channel and yeah, that's what happened to it. Going back to the comment though, what Ben said is 100% correct. People who play Final Fantasy XIV have no reason to be interested in Ashes of Creation. The two games are on completely separate spectrums, but people interested in Ashes of Creation should look towards Final Fantasy XIV and how their developers have engaged with the community to make the game as good as it can be. Steven and the team at Intrepid are doing such a great job at communicating to us how the game is being developed and I have no doubt in my mind that Ashes will be huge one day. Can we expect to see conventions like 14 has or like WoW had with huge audiences super engaged with an upcoming update? And I genuinely can't wait to be there in the crowd with Steven up on stage revealing the monk archetype to us in a future release. There will be a monk class at some point. Right guys, and that's pretty much all I got for today's video. I want to thank the newcomers to the Discord and of course the Discord boys themselves. You're the best and I appreciate you a lot. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. What a completely fucking useless video. So, you made a shitty video to tell us you're excited to see what they changed. Get out of here. Bah. How much do they pay you to make these videos? Oh, making gameplay guides right now is completely dumb and useless. Sorry, balance has not been a thing at all yet. Gameplay will completely change in that regard. These ideas are mostly dumb. So yeah, guys, if you could just comment better ideas for me to use in the videos, that'd be great.